Hey guys, to help around the forums, host the website, and travel, we've introduced a universal service fee for in-depth coverage, including this video. The goal is to be transparent and unbiased. This is not an endorsement. It's a privilege to serve you. Let's get into it. Hey, what's going on guys? So I am here in the Chamonix State Park in Pennsylvania. I actually found a nice big green area where it kind of stretch out and show you the specs on this trike. So this is an electric sun traditional trike. It's uh, a trike in a traditional sense where it has one wheel in the front, two wheels in the back, also called a Delta trike. And it has a pretty cool system on it for electric power. Let's go ahead and get into the specs and I'll show you how it works. Okay, so as an electric trike, it's actually pretty approachable. I mean, that's the first thing that I notice when you kind of look at this frame is it has a nice step through to it. You have a really low uh, step over height, about 13 inches off of the ground to get your foot over there. So it's pretty easy to get in and out of this guy. Uh, also, you have a fair amount of cargo capacity. Uh, you do have this rack in the back. I actually have some extra stuff in here that'll kind of go over in a little bit, but I wanted to kind of showcase a little bit of its uh, capabilities here. Uh, and that's the battery that's mounted in there. We'll go over that in the electric system. Uh, but the trike has a 300 pound weight capacity for the entire trike. Got that big seat on there. So yeah, this is definitely a trike for adding some mobility. You know, if you wanna get up, get out, kind of see the sun and get a little bit more freedom uh, under your wings. Uh, so as a trike, the balance is pretty simple. I mean, you got the two wheels in the back so you can sit on this thing more or less indefinitely, especially with a nice big seat like this and not have to worry about tipping over. The trike does have a top speed of 15 miles an hour, uh, which is intentional because if you're on a trike, then if you're going way too fast, it's a little bit easier uh, to tip over. So they've limited the speed to 15, which is a very good choice because uh, it's still really comfortable uh, to ride at those speeds, whether you're going straight or even on a turn, depending on the breadth of it. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump into the mechanical specs and we'll start up at the front of the bike. Okay, so this bike has a 24 inch wheel size. That's 24 by 175 uh, on the front as well as on the rear. So of course on the front you have the presence of the direct drive motor there. Uh, and it kind of gives the illusion that it's smaller, but it actually is the same size. <laughs> I had to look at it a couple of times, uh, get out the measuring tape. Uh, these are the same size tires, same size wheels. Although on the front you do have a double walled uh, aluminum wheel. And on the back, you have a single wall uh, aluminum wheel. These are 12 gauge spokes in the front and they are meant to house like the extra torque uh, that's coming from this direct drive motor. And then on the back, you have a smaller gauge spoke uh, because they do handle weight of the rider, but you don't have nearly as much torque. Well, you don't have any torque <laughs> coming uh, from the back wheel. Uh, so this uh, system is also using a V brake up front. So these are Pro Max kind of like cantilever brakes or V brakes uh, that is going up to the front here. Uh, and on the rear, you have a 160 millimeter rotor in the back for a mechanical disc brake. That's a Pro Max 300, by the way. So it kind of has a hybrid. Uh, you know, you have the V brake up front, very simple, easy to fix, you know, easy access that you have up here. And then using the same handles, which are these uh, whooshing handles, uh, you go into the back brake in the rear, which is great. I mean, that brake really does a lot of the good stopping power. It helps to kind of uh, even out the bike as you're coming to a stop from down a hill or at a high speed. Uh, so that's definitely appreciated. I've seen a lot of trikes before uh, where the brakes are kind of like, uh, you know, they might do coaster brakes or they might do Flintstone brakes. I have seen that before. <laughs> but with these guys, you got a good set of brakes on here, uh, a good mix of the two. Uh, so like I said about the levers, uh, these are some whooshing levers uh, that have a nice big handle on them. You got like about at least four fingers worth of space. Uh, there to grip on as well as a parking brake so when you squeeze down the brake and then you pull on that little tab and then let go on the brake boom there you go got like a little parking brake uh, so that's for one brake and then you have it also on the other side as well so you got a dual parking brake uh, if you just want to come to a stop kind of relax uh, sit down uh, that sort of thing uh, the handlebars have a pretty good rise to them and they do that to get a really comfortable riding position on the trike itself uh, you'll notice that the seat uh, can go quite a bit ways lower, but in the position that it's in now, it's already kind of set up for a cruiser where the handlebars are well above the height of the seat. And they do that to give a really upright position with these handlebars that have a really high rise up in here. So you've got like a nice comfy, you know, just kind of putting your hands out in a very natural position. There's also a little bit of back sweep to the handlebars in which instead of coming straight out and being over in this area, they kind of come back to meet you a little bit. So that kind of tightens up the cockpit a little bit, gives you a nice, easy sense of control, uh, very intuitive on that side. 
Uh, you got a pretty good set of grips here that are uh, friction mounted. They're nice rubber grip that stay pretty stiff. I do like that about that. And they match the throttle, which is kind of what they're going for on this one. You could totally get any kind of grips you want. Grips are a very easy thing to switch out. But these ones match pretty well, and they're nice and stable. You know, this bike does not have a uh, mechanical shifter system, so there's just one speed uh, on the bike. So meaning that you have a chain that starts up here and goes all the way to the back and doesn't change uh, at all. There's no derailleur system for it. And that's fine, because this bike uh, is really kind of geared for throttling, <laughs> if that makes sense. Uh, geared for throttling is a very interesting way to put it. Uh, so on the front here you have uh, a 36 tooth chain ring uh, going into a uh, an American, what they call an American crank system. Uh, but anyways, this one has a 36 teeth on the front chain ring. So that's 36 of these little guys up here, which is relatively small. And this crank system is what they call an American or a single, single piece crank system in which coming down, the pedals of course are um, not a part of the crank intuitively, but uh, the crank comes up in here, it's a single piece that goes through the bottom bracket and then out there. So if you were to pull this crank out, it would kind of look like a lightning bolt uh, coming through. And that's what they call an American system or a one-piece uh, crank and 165 millimeters there. These are plastic pedals. Um, these are, I think, the VP560 uh, platform pedal with a little reflector built into it and the little tiny little nubs to kind of you know grip onto the sole of your feet. Uh, so it's nice to have that in there. So coming back down to the frame into the single gearing, in the back uh, you have in the middle of the axle, uh, you have a 20 tooth, um, let's see, I guess what we call this a, a sprocket back here. It's not really a set of gears, it's just a single sprocket that is held in place into the keyed axle. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. So you just have the one gearing, so it's really simple up front. You don't have to switch gears or press buttons or anything. It's just a single speed, kind of cleans everything up uh, a little bit. Uh, so while we're back here, this axle, is a solid steel axle that goes throughout the width of the trike here. So it starts on that end and comes all the way through. Also with this axle system, it is a solid axle, one piece of metal going from one side to the other. Uh, so that is actually a really good point for strength. You have a nice, wide, fully supported axle in the back. It's one reason why they can get a pretty high weight capacity uh, for this vehicle um, in total. Uh, so yeah, I kind of mentioned the brake earlier, the rear um, brake. This is a dual piston uh, Pro Max 300 mechanical uh, disc brake here uh, that's coming off of that uh, pulley. Uh, so yeah, and that goes up to the handlebars, of course. And coming back uh, to this side uh, is a good time to kind of talk about the basket in a little more detail. Uh, so when you get the bike, this is the owner's manual. Set that aside. And the uh, charger for this particular model. And this is actually a spare battery uh, that we have here that I'll talk about in a second. So with the basket, this basket here uh, actually has the cutaways for the battery mount. Uh, so the battery kind of mounts and dismounts uh, through this system in here. Now we'll kind of pull the key out and then kind of get a sense for what I'm talking about. So they kind of cut away right here to accommodate the space for the battery. It mounts really stiff on these rails that are mounted to the frame. We'll go ahead and put it back in. So this basket can hold a fair amount of weight because it is mounted to the frame. These rails are somewhat thin, so if you got a wiggly load like a kid or something, then yeah, I don't know if I'd recommend carrying a child in this, but if you got something that's not strapped down, then the weight of the items pressing up against the railing of this rack, especially with a cutout here, might be a little much, but as far as you know, vertical weight going down back to Mother Earth, you should be good. You know, you got a lot of uh, weight bearing here with the dual section of the frame uh, coming around there. So one last mechanical thing I did want to talk about that's actually pretty interesting is the seat here. Uh, so this seat is, I guess what you call like a Western uh, style seat, almost like a saddle, like a real horse saddle. <laughs> it has this horn or this like rim on the outside uh, to cup the backside of the rider, as well as kind of like this cutout here to accommodate sensitive areas and the thighs just kind of rest down in there. So definitely this is a seat that's made for sitting. Uh, this is very comfortable to sit in, <laughs> very comfortable. So the idea is that you sit uh, firmly in here, uh, hands up and throttle. Uh, it doesn't have an active uh, sort of profile at all. It's actually a 15 uh, inch wide uh, for the footprint. And it actually has a nice brace on the back. So this is the 28 by six or 28.6 um, seat post diameter that comes into the seat post tube right here. This is quite traditional. Uh, but then when it comes up here, you get to this mount area that mounts on the front, you know, on the horn of the seat, but also has this support brace. And this is how they can get kind of a 300 pound weight capacity on this trike in general. It's because if you have all of all of the rider weight coming into one little tiny spot right there, 
then the seat can tilt. You know, that's a that's very much a thing. But when you have this support, this dual support arm right here, that's pretty cool because you can now support the rider weight coming towards the rear. You can put more of the total weight for the vehicle towards the rear. And then that way you have a much better uh, riding position all in all. And this is adjustable. It takes a little bit um, because you gotta loosen the collar right here for the seat post tube. Uh, and then you gotta pull out the bolts on both sides. And then this has four positions to raise or lower the brace right here. And then you lower the seat along with that. You can fine tune it you can kind of tilt it one way or the other if you wanted to kind of get a different kind of position uh, for the front end of the seat uh, but yeah this brace on this big seat is a big part of what makes this trike such a, a great approachable bike uh, for riding so let's go ahead and talk about the electric system we'll start up at the front of the bike so this bike is using a direct drive. This is actually a 500 watt direct drive motor uh, from eBike Kit, which is a sister company to electrictrike.com. Uh, so this direct drive motor does have, okay, there we go. There's a logo, if you've ever seen that before. Uh, so this system does have a single torque arm uh, up on the front here. This is to allow the system to get a good deal of torque on it without compromising the, uh, the fork on the front. Uh, so this electric system is pretty pretty simple you know there's not a whole lot of uh, things to go wrong on it uh, the direct drive system is really good for maintaining speed and this one actually has 35 newton meters of torque uh, coming out of it comes up on this really nice disconnect they actually clean up the wires quite a bit uh, these disconnects are also waterproof that come up to the display uh, where the rider actually interacts with the bike so let's go ahead and get into the cockpit area and show you how to operate it so with the battery in position, there's actually a little pin in the back here that kind of moves down as you turn the key. It's already aligned in this case, but when you turn the key to be totally horizontal, now the battery is turned on, it's plugged in, make sure that's going now. And then up at the front of the bike, you press and hold a little M as in Mary button right there. And then your system will turn on. And this is showing you uh, the basics uh, right here. So you have your current speed uh, right in the middle, easy to see your um, pedal assist level and also throttle level, which is number five in this case, and an odometer uh, that shows you uh, seven mile, miles on it so far. This area up here that kind of has this ruler sort of motif is actually the battery level. So as you consume the battery, these will tick down uh, in little groups uh, to show you kind of an estimate of what your battery level is at. Uh, so um, on the control system, you do have the up or down arrows. Uh, so pressing those will adjust this number right here. So right now it's in four, you can press it down to zero to turn it off and just ride normal, or you can crank that up to level five, the default to get some power. So this controls uh, not only the cap for pedal assist, uh, but also the cap for the throttle. So if you are in pedal assist or if you're in level one, then pulling on the throttle will get you up to, oh, I don't know, maybe five miles an hour. And then pressing it again to level two, that'll increase to seven miles an hour. I'm kind of picking numbers out of a hat, but that's the concept is that you're kind of adjusting the cap for the top speed and then all the way up to five, which of course is 15 miles an hour as stated prior. Um, the pedal assist is using a cadence based pedal assist system, uh, which is actually mounted to the frame itself. I hope you can kind of see that. There's a ring right here that has 12 magnets on it. And I've seen a lot of pedal assist systems like this that are mounted to the cranks. Uh, in this case, it's actually mounted to the frame itself. So it's nice and solid, uh, not gonna go anywhere, uh, certainly. Uh, but that's what engages your pedal assist. So as you turn the pedals, that's what gets the electric system moving. Or if you just wanna expressly engage the motor at any old time, uh, you go ahead and twist that and then off you go. And the motor will propel the bike forward. Uh, this does have a reverse control on it. So twisting the throttle just like normal will get it going. When you let go, uh, the throttle will spring back into position. Pressing the button in will switch it from forward to reverse. So as a trike, it's got a reverse. You twist on that and then the motor will take you backwards. Reverse actually is limited to five amps of power. So if you're going along on forward, you're probably gonna get a lot more uh, energy out of this thing, um, propelling yourself forward. In reverse, they kind of tone it down for safety reasons. They probably don't want people going super fast in reverse. <laughs> kind of a hot rod thing. Uh, Got to remove some reli uh, liability on their end. Um, but nonetheless, it's pretty fun. 
uh, to kind of go in reverse, kind of wiggle around a little bit if you got to get this in and out of a garage, something like that. All right, so one last thing about the battery is that this is a 36 volt system, uh, and this is a 36 volt 10 amp hour battery uh, that's inside of this metal case that, as you saw, kind of mounts into that rail, and it's nice and sturdy, not going anywhere, well protected. They do have another price point option if you wanted to get a slightly smaller 36 volt 9 amp hour battery you can get one of those uh, but it does come in a case so you can kind of save a little bit of money because uh, it comes in a little bag and this is kind of like your main port to plug it in uh, they also have another size in which you can get a larger battery a 36 volt 20 amp hour uh, which also fits into this case uh, so there's kind of some options there for customization if you wanted to get something that has a really high amp hours which by the way would give you a little bit extra distance the power would be relatively similar uh, but you get more distance considerably more with a 20 amp hour but this is a 20 amp um, amp hour by the way and it kind of fits into this bag kind of fills it out uh, nice and it is safe of course to kind of zip this up put it inside the back of the rack there, plug it in, and off you go. Uh, so yeah, that's about the electric system, the mechanical system, kind of about what the bike is made for. Let's go ahead and jump on and go for a ride. All right, so here we are on a nice little uh, nice little jaunt uh, here in the park. Uh, so we're on a paved road, and one thing I forgot to mention was that uh, this system does have a pretty low end for um, a top speed. <laughs> I realize that doesn't sound entirely clear. So when you're in level one pedal assist, uh, or just level one assist, because it's also tied to the throttle, uh, when you're in level one assist, it helps you out up to about three and a half miles an hour. And then it sort of maintains that speed if you're pedaling or if you are pulling down on the throttle all the way. And that's in level one. And that's pretty slow. That's like a walking speed. Uh, so you could totally just ride this thing next to someone for a nice walk in the park, and it would maintain very well. And another good point about it is that uh, it can go that slow because it has three wheels. With a three-wheeled trike, balance is really, especially at low speeds, balance is really, it's, it's in the bag. <laughs> you know, you totally got balance. Don't I gotta worry about that. So on a bicycle, if you're riding a bicycle and you want any kind of bike, electric or not, and you want to ride next to someone, you're probably gonna be going about five, maybe six miles an hour, just to maintain enough momentum that you can stay on two wheels. Uh, but the trike, that's not a thing. You could totally just ride next to somebody uh, at three miles an hour and it's totally comfortable. Uh, so cranking up the pedal assist, it kind of increases that. It is the cap for the top speed, but aside from that, it's also maintains that speed pretty well. So you can sit down on full throttle um, at you know a relatively low cap and it'll maintain that speed without jerking, you know, like start, stop, start, stop. It's a pretty smart system. Um, even though it's very simple, uh, it has a lot, of, uh, a lot of nice touches to it. Another thing I forgot to mention uh, while talking about the electric system is that the controller is specifically programmed not to throw out full power uh, from the get-go. So if you're sitting there at a stop and you um, crank it up to level five and then you pull on that throttle, it eases into the power because it's trying not to intimidate the rider, it's trying not to throw too much. Because if you just sit down and twist full throttle um, at a dead stop, it's probably gonna spin the wheel, the, the front wheel, which, you know, it's not gonna really hurt anything, but it's, it's certainly a, a little bit to get used to. So yeah, this is pretty cool, the way that they've got this all set up. Uh, I like it a lot. It's very, very intentionally made for this kind of uh, stop and smell the roses sort of riding, and uh, I kind of enjoy it. All right, guys, so here we are on the Electric Sun traditional trike. I got it cranked up to level five uh, assist, and we're going to go ahead and sit down, give it full throttle, kind of what the vehicle's made for, and kind of take you for a spin. So let's go. So at about that turn, we were going at about 10 miles an hour uh, when I made that U-turn kind of coming around. So you can still maintain a pretty good speed on this, making a nice wide turn. Uh, it worked out pretty good. Uh, so yeah, this system does 
does kind of have like a little bit of a lag to it and i think that that's like entirely based on the total weight uh, of this vehicle uh, because the bike does or the trike rather does weigh 79 pounds and I myself, I'm a little bit above that. So with this direct drive motor kind of kicking in, uh, I don't know if I call it a lag or just kind of getting up to, not so much getting up to speed, but kind of getting up to torque uh, enough to move uh, the entirety of it. Uh, so that's one thing to look out for. It's not like immediately uh, responsive. And that's fine because you're on a trike and it's pretty easy going. So you don't want anything that's too intimidating. So yeah, I think it's a great choice. It's a lot of fun. Okay, so I did want to talk a little bit about some of the trade-offs that you see on a vehicle like this. Of course, this is not going to be, you know, a high performance uh, sort of vehicle. Uh, this is very much an easy going sort of thing. And one thing that you'll notice is that if you're pedaling a lot, that this space right down here, uh, right there, kind of comes into contact with the thighs when you're pedaling. Uh, so this is very much built for kind of sitting down throttling. Um, I'm pedaling so I can actually kind of use my hands a little bit with the camera. But you can tell that if you were had to sit, if you had to sit down and pedal on this for any length of time, that would kind of get old pretty quick. Uh, so if you're considering if you wanted to get a larger battery pack for this, um, keep that in mind that you can pedal this thing, but it's, you know, it's not the most comfortable. Let me go ahead and show you the uh, rear sprocket. I hope I can get the camera in the right spot. So I also engage the brake a little bit there, the rear brake. That disc brake is pretty nice. You know, it's a good addition. Uh, I really like the fact that it has a, a brake on both ends. And then I realize that it's a caliper brake on the front and a disc brake in the back, and that's fine. You know, that's fine, it works. I'm glad that there's two, because <laughs> it makes for a very, very uh, p good peace of mind uh, while riding and stopping. Okay guys, thanks for checking out the Electric Sun traditional trike with me. It's actually been a really nice ride, pretty easy going and it's, Really beautiful day, so yeah, matches up perfectly. If you want to check out the full specifications for this bike and all the measurements, go to electricbikereview.com and you can search for this along with other bikes from electrictrike.com. You can compare this with all sorts of different bikes and trikes if you'd like, and you can also participate in the forums, kind of ask a question, hang out in the community if you'd like. So yeah, thanks for watching guys, ride safe.